What's up everybody, I'm Matt. And I'm Beth. And today we're gonna to be reviewing the interior in the 2020 Mazda CX-30. So the CX-30 is their new entry here uh, in the subcompact SUV class. This will eventually replace the CX-3, it seems, although that is currently still available in the lineup. You also have the CX-5, of course, for those who want a little bit more space. And that's the one thing with this vehicle is it's not quite as spacious as you might be expecting for an SUV. Um, it's still a little bit on the small side, uh, but it is really nice. This has the new Mazda interior, which is a, a really big upgrade, I think, personally, over the old Mazda stuff, although it does make some interesting design changes over the uh, you know long-standing Mazda stuff they've had for several years now um, but uh, I think it's pretty attractive I like you know everything seems really nice and softly padded I like this brown leather here personally I think it's kind of a cool little change uh, so everything isn't just one color I mean you have your browns you have your tans you have your black you have your chrome every type of interior that you would like is definitely in this car I'm not crazy about it but it's not terrible. The only thing that I don't like is that this screen is so pushed back that it's just really hard to see in my opinion. And I think I would like it to be way closer than it is. Yeah, I know like my sister who's a little shorter, she also didn't like the fact that this kind of rises up a little bit, so you can't really see the bottom of the screen if you sit lower in your seat or if you're on the shorter side. Um, so that's something, you know, you definitely can raise your seat up and, you know, make sure so you can see it okay, but it's um, just interesting the way that it's kind of set back there. I know Mazda has said they wanted to have it closer to the windshield so that your eyes don't have to adjust as much between looking at the screen and looking at the road to, you know, minimize distraction and, um, you know, but it is definitely odd because of most other screens these days are way closer to you um, and you know this of course isn't touchscreen either you have a controller here exclusively now there is no way to use touch which is basically the exact opposite of the industry norm and the trend the way everything's going these days of going to touch screens but moving on here to the seats and the CX-30 um, they are really comfortable I will say that and uh, have you know the standard adjustments and stuff and the pull strings decent um, not the most sporty uh, seats here in this segment but um, very appropriate with the whole luxury feeling of the CX-30. Moz is really trying to kind of become a premium brand and you see that in a lot of the choices they make in their interiors and the way it drives and all that kind of stuff. By the way, I will be having a driving review which I will link above if you're curious to hear about that. But anyway, the seats are heated which is nice. But interestingly, there is no cooled option for these seats, which some competitors in this segment do offer. Uh, so that is one thing where this doesn't feel quite as luxurious as some of the others. Yeah, it is kind of weird. I think because the seat is perforated that the, it could be easily added, but I mean, I'm not sure. But I do really think that these seats are very comfortable. The heat is nice. And if you're not used to having either ventilated or cooled seats, you know, it's not that big of a deal if you don't get it. Yeah, and there are like blank buttons here by the heated seat controls where I feel like they gotta be adding cooled seats eventually because I think that would be a, a great inclusion. And they do have it in some of their higher stuff like the CX-5, the Mazda 6, those, you can get that. So hopefully they do have that in eventually, but just interesting they don't have it here yet. Another interesting thing, you don't have a heated steering wheel, which is another thing, again, this is trying to be a luxury type vehicle and yet you don't even have an option for heated steering wheel at all. Uh, hopefully that's something they add down the road as well because that's something that is, you know, sorely lacking here in this vehicle. Again, if they're trying to give it this upmarket feel, you got to have those kind of features. But moving on to the steering wheel here, it has a nice 9 and 3 grip, nice little 10 and 2 notches, and uh, it's a great feeling wheel. I do like the metal buttons you have here on it. They do feel very expensive. I like the thin spokes and um, it just a few little uh, little switches and toggles um, and a pretty simple wheel I like the way it's set up you also have paddle shifters on the back of the wheel here in this higher premium grade that we're in we're in a fully loaded one by the way here and these can get right around like just under thirty thousand dollars when you include destination and everything so it can get pretty pricey and again there are some others in the segment that do offer heated wheel cooled seats all that kind of stuff for about that same price point but anyway uh, yeah a great steering wheel the gauges are also very nice here in the CX-30 so uh, nice clear analog dials then you have that digital portion in the middle, which is great. Um, but it doesn't have as many features, again, as many of the competitors. You will see that uh, basically you only have three different screens to look at there in the middle. You either have your fuel economy, uh, just a blank thing showing you just the speedometer, or you have your um, safety system display there, and that's it. So uh, Mazda deliberately has said they don't want to distract people with having uh, the uh, infotainment stuff, your media sources, all that kind of stuff in the gauge cluster. They would rather you just look at your screen instead for that stuff. 
stuff, um, which is kind of interesting, but um, I can kind of, I guess, understand their point of view. But that's just something that, again, all the other competition, usually you have more stuff there you can, uh, you know, toggle through, and this doesn't have much of that. But it does all the basics very, very well. You also do have a heads-up display here in this loaded model, and so that is a nice feature, which normally now will just show you, like, your speed, but whenever you are driving, it will show you your speed limit, your blind spot information, as well as adaptive cruise information, all that kind of stuff will be up there. Coming over to the side of the dashboard here, uh, you have that screen, which is a nice size screen. You know, it's a uh, pretty wide, and I like that it's kind of you know it's a very thin uh, display and it looks kind of futuristic in that regard. And uh, you know, the graphics are all very crisp here. This is the newest version of Mazda's infotainment system, and they really have simplified it. They usually only give you between five and seven options on each screen, so they it makes it very easy while you're driving. They were very obsessed with trying to minimize distractions here, and so they went at all kinds of uh, psychology and science into trying to figure out how to make this as little bit of a distraction as possible. And so um, I think it's it's pretty well done. Uh, you know, we've had several Mazdas now with this infotainment system uh, over the past year or so here, and I am slowly warming up to it. I think this favorites button really does help a lot if you take the time to program in all your favorites. You just hit that button, it immediately pulls up your favorites, and you don't have to fumble with the clumsy uh, tuning of radio stations, which this doesn't do very well because there's 15 different submenus. I'm exaggerating, but there's multiple clicks just to change the radio station normally otherwise. And um, so if you have the favorites in there, you can jump to whatever your favorite source is, whatever your favorite stations are, all on one page of favorites. And that is really handy. Um, and so personally, I don't think it's too bad. Yeah, I'm not crazy about it, but once again, we do have a lot of cars that we're constantly filtering through. So for me, it is a little bit of a learning curve, and I think for anybody who buys this car, it will be a little bit of a learning curve, but once you get used to it, then you get used to it. And I think that's true with anything, but at least the first couple of weeks, it might still be really confusing, the buttons you press and like all that jazz going into the different sub menus, but I think it's probably a really good system. I'm just still not too crazy about it yet. Yeah, but that's a good point. I mean, it's it's not the easiest to use at first glance, but once you learn it and you're you know used to everything, it'll be fine. It's just, it will have more of a learning curve than any other system. But I think once you get past that, you will probably enjoy it. And from the Mazda owners that I've seen comment on previous uh, interior reviews on Mazdas in the past, they seem to really love that favorites function and they seem to really enjoy this system. So, um, you know, it's a little trickier whenever you're reviewing cars constantly. Yeah, to, you know, you want everything to be super easy right off the bat. This isn't super easy right off the bat, but in time, I believe that it does kind of grow on you a lot. And so that's good. Um, you know, the navigation maps are all crisp. You do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration here in the higher trims. I think, believe the base model doesn't get it, but just about everything else aside from the base model does get that smartphone integration, which is good. And also tied in with this infotainment system is this Bose center point stereo, which uh, is of course on this highest trim, but it is also on some of the lower trims as well. And I still just adore this system. It is so good sound. And I just, every time I get in one of these Mazdas with this Bose system, I just want to listen to all the songs on my phone. Like, I just, I love listening to music in these Mazdas. This system is fantastic. It's the same one that's in the Mazda 3, and I hope they spread it out to the rest of their lineup because it is so crisp. It has the cleanest bass out of anything I think I've heard under at least 50 grand. Um, I mean, it is such a good system. And if you are an audio level, lover and you absolutely want to have the best stereo, if that's a big thing on your priority list, get the Mazda just for that alone. This system is fantastic. It's really great. Yeah, <laughs> I really, really love it. It's uh, There's very few systems I really go crazy about. This is one of a handful. I can count on one hand how many systems I really get excited about. This is one of them. It is fantastic. Absolutely worth the upgrade. And um, yeah, I just, I love it. And it's also really clear and crisp for um, like radio. Even like satellite radio is really good, which usually uh, that's not great in most of the vehicles. But mm -hmm. they did a nice job with their you know sound processing of cleaning it up so it sounds Sounds really nice. Um, so yeah, overall super impressed with that. Beyond that, uh, coming down, you have your climbing controls here. Just a few buttons, very simple. I mean, you know, just a handful of buttons here. Really nice feeling knobs and everything. One thing though is with these vents by the passenger, there is this little lip here. So if you are taller, if you do face those vents upward, it might not get to you, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I just feel like, yeah, there could be a potential blockage there. Um, 
It's just a little bit of an odd design choice, but I, I think it looks good. Again, it's kind of cool looking. It's just uh, kind of an interesting uh, choice as far as where they ended up putting the vents. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, coming down, you have you know another little area of buttons here next to the shifter. And so you have your infotainment controller here and uh, the parking brake volume knob. And all these knobs have a nice feel to them too, just like the uh, climate control knobs do. And in this area, you'll also see uh, your first couple of storage bins here. So you have your cup holders here and an, a little pocket here in front of the cup holders and uh, my sister actually pointed out this is an interesting thing she thinks that really tall cups or like you know mugs or something might possibly get blocked by this and I didn't have a large thing to fit in there to really try out but I think you know as long as it's not an enormous thing like some people use these days I think it should be okay you know normal tall you know mugs and you know coffee mugs should be fine but uh, if you have something really large it might not fit in there great because of the way you have a little bit of overhang, overhang here with the climate controls that's an interesting thing to note there uh, but good cup holders nonetheless you also have pretty large pockets here on the doors with a bottle holder which is great to have there and then you have the center armrest which does have a nice soft padding to it really feels plush uh, but unfortunately you can't just lift this and open it up. Mazda insists on saying that it's easier to slide this back and then lift it up. I don't know how that I still do not like this setup it's just unnecessarily complicated but anyway once you do have that open here um, then you have a good amount of space nothing amazing uh, but you know pretty average for the segment you also see a USB jack and a power outlet in there and uh, so good to have that just uh, keep in mind if you're wondering why this doesn't open slide it first but if you do leave this back then you don't have to worry about sliding it and it could just always stay back and then you can open it right yeah, so I guess as long as you're okay with you know having a little bit of stuff out in the open here and not having it totally sealed off, and that would that's probably the better way to do it. I should just leave it like that, and then it wouldn't annoy me as so much. Yeah, but then maybe if you're nervous about this being kind of open, that gives you the freedom to kind of close it when you're not in the car. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, good point. I do also like you have more of this padding down by your knee area here too, which is great and it's really soft. And so uh, that's something you don't get in most other vehicles in this segment, having padding by your knee, which is great if you're on long drives and resting your legs there and uh, so just another area where the Mazda feels a little bit more premium. There's also another USB jack here right above uh, the cup holders and the storage bin here. Back seat here in the CX-30 is uh, a little bit on the tight side. So, um, you know, it's uh, a comfortable back seat, but they just not a lot of space. So I'm five foot nine, me sitting behind myself, I have like an inch of leg room to spare. Like it is tight. So, and again, I'm only five nine. If you had anyone, you know, like six feet tall driving this vehicle, that back seat is gonna be really, really tight, uh, borderline unusable. So that's how cramped the back seat is. It's kind of a bummer that they didn't make it a little bit more spacious. I think as far as back seat goes you don't really have any more space than you would in a Mazda 3 so you're not getting any it's this is really just a lifted Mazda 3 in that regard as far as space goes you're not gonna have any extra space back there really and um, another thing so you do have pockets in the doors back there but when you look forward you have air vents which is nice but there is no USB jacks back there either for those rear passengers and there's even some cheaper stuff like even a Nissan kicks has two USB jacks uh, for backseat occupants and I mean this is much more premium feeling and the fact that we don't have some of these key competitive features that you know most of the other vehicles out there offer um, is kind of again a sore exclusion here in the CX-30 so I wish it had USB jacks otherwise they do have a full down center armrest with two cup holders built into it so that's nice to have and there is also plenty of headroom too back there so there's no issues with headroom it's just the legroom is a little bit tight um, but anyway moving on to the trunk that is one area where you don't have any space issues really I think it's pretty good I think it's a little bit bigger than what you used to get with the CX-3 and um, you know it does have a, a little bit of space there under the floor you know the floor mats uh, you can fit back there something like that but not a lot but you do have a spare tire back there which is great um, and it is still just a nice wide and long space and uh, you know pretty deep as well so you should be able to stack a good amount of things probably have a little bit more space back than you would with like a Mazda 3 hatch or something like that um, so it does have an advantage there and uh, so overall pretty good amount of trunk space here for this class of vehicle but yes yeah, so that's all our thoughts here on the Mazda CX-30 overall, uh, I still think it's a, a very premium feeling 
vehicle just wish it had some of those you know key features that it doesn't have um, once it gets cold seats and his steering wheel and some more USB jacks in the back there I think this would really be you know the most luxurious option in this segment and uh, you know everything else like I said the stereo is amazing everything else is very nice about it the ride is also very luxurious too you can go watch my driving review if you're curious to hear how this drives uh, but yes that's all our thoughts here on it let us know your thoughts on the CX-30 in the comments below thank you guys very much for watching we'll see you on the next one take, take care, care.